Amazon, The Last Call. Here in Tropical Utopia, everything is possible. The Samaoma, the queen of the jungle, drives her roots into the heart of the city, and the traffic pursues her relentlessly. This is exactly what we're going to talk about today, about encounters and misunderstandings, about a lack of communication between people and animals, between plants and animals, between city life and the wild jungle. All this here on our program. Today, 40 million Brazilians are living in a place that is completely different from what it was when they were born. 40 million wandering individuals come to the city in search of a dream that almost always ends up as a bitter vision. Too close to nature to miss it, and too far away to enjoy it. The Amazon River is a humanized river, taken over fiercely like an avalanche. There are 20 million people from other parts of the world living in the Brazilian basin alone, stationed on its shores in order to milk its great bosom. The government admits to disorganized immigration and is considering theoretical solutions and good intentions. The Amazonia today is an urbanized area, that's a fact, and it is important, therefore, take into consideration the fact that 60% of the Amazonia population resides in cities. We have today a jungle that is far more fenced in by cities than it was 10 years ago. We should confront the town planning problem by facing our difficulties in a positive sense, in a way that will consolidate the current occupation, and that is an essential requirement in this region, in terms of the fact that no one is willing to open new fronts of occupation in the Amazonia. But not in practice, these are two different things. Today, right now, thousands of people still see the Amazonian jungle as no one's land, or rather, everyone's land, to which the cruel rules of the city game should be imposed. The essences of the forest are substituted by the bottled perfume of this young princess. The kingdom of the jungle, it's losing terrain before the state of the favelas, and this promised land is acquiring a new image. Drawn by the messages of the state radio, hundreds of landless families of the Movimento de Lucinterra come to this destroyed paradise, and after leaving their tracks, they realize that nothing will be the same again. When people started clearing these lands, it was sad because you would see araras, small monkeys. It's terrible to see how those animals try to escape. And it's hard not to cause them injury. There's not enough room here for all of us. It's either them or us. The animals have hidden. Man is a destroyer on his own. He just destroys. He doesn't build. He doesn't do anything to build. He just destroys. We've built this house here and we're not moving. Life is hard for us too. 
In the 1970s and 80s, the National Institute of Colonization and Agricultural Reform decided to place five million colonists from the northeast region of the country in Amazonia. 5,000 families answered their call, which included free land and a minimum salary during the first six months. The colonists quickly learned that the land lost fertility after two years. The rainforest can only be a rainforest. Destroying it, they created a new world for children, a hell in paradise where they grow up surrounded by our virtues, our defects, and far away from nature, which gave birth to them forever. Children play traditional games. Marbles in Brazil are bolinhas de gude, round like the attacked planet. It's going to be difficult for future generations to begin a return journey. There is too much exhausted land for it to be what it once was. The war against nature began years ago, and the enemy to be brought down is too powerful, as they all know in the tropical hospital. Every day, dozens of citizens come to the Manaus Hospital Center with symptoms of an illness that is new to them. Malaria, with its two forms, Vivax, which is less virulent, and the feared Falciparum, which has mortal consequences and which has already entered their blood and their lives. The experts know that this tropical disease goes hand in hand with the overpopulation of Amazonia. This is not the only problem that can be solved with clinical resources. This is why we have come here, 42 kilometers away from the hospital, an infected place called Ramao de Rufino, where the destruction of the rainforest is a good culture medium for anopheline mosquitoes, transmitter of this blight of colonized Amazonia. Although we surround ourselves with warm elements and sensual things like a hammock, like we tried to find one time in the rainforest, it is not the best place to be inhabited. Above all, as we are seeing, we break the most elemental rules of coexistence with nature. The rainforest defends itself with small animals that only measure three millimeters but are capable of putting our lives in danger. There is a person, this man here, who knows the world of these beings very well and even puts his health at stake to study their behavioral patterns. I sit in my chair and wait for the mosquito to come to me. And a co-worker sits outside the house waiting to catch them there also. This is the ideal place for me sitting capturing mosquitoes. I stay in this place from six in the afternoon. I take uh, the elastic tube and uh, another test tube and I wait for the mosquito. At 59 years of age, the entomologist Nelson Fay says that he is a human guinea pig. To fight against malaria, you need to fully know the habits of an anopheline mosquito. That's why they let themselves get bitten, in order to capture them in full action and on their own body. He has been doing this for 36 years. He has built a school, and his son, who also works for the Manaus Tropical Medicine Institute, accompanies him on this inspection. Together, they unexpectedly visit the homes of the infected families. Their only objective is to control the spreading of this disease, which, to the east of Manaus, causes 70% of all deaths. 
Flavio Fe began this job at the age of 20, and he is an expert mosquito catcher. Although it may be his father's desire, this is how he spends his life. These anopheline larvae are a potential danger. The female mosquitoes are the transmitters of this evil disease, which makes it hard to believe that, with a lifespan of only six weeks, they could kill a human being. In 1970, there were 52,000 cases of malaria in Amazonian Brazil, and today there are more than half a million. With his studies, Dr. Nelson Fay collaborates in finding a vaccine, a cure against a disease that he has suffered himself. I suffered my first case of malaria in Rondania. I was overtaken by four types of falciparum. I fell into a coma and was taken to Manaus in a government airplane, and there I was cured. We returned to Rondania again in 1967. I also worked there in a place where medical assistance was given at any rate. From 1966 to 1998, I came down with 67 types of malaria. According to a United Nations report, within 50 years, 6 million square kilometers of rainforest will have been urbanized. If human beings want to live here, they will have no other option but to cede land to the legitimate children of the jungle that, in truth, arrived here long before we did. <laughs> 